Welcome back, folks. Um, a few weeks ago, I, I ordered some of these uh, CTI oven controlled oscillators or OCXOs for short off eBay. These ones right here. And there are many vendors selling them. Uh, all you have to do is search for CTI OSC 5A2B02. Um, these ones, as you can see, were less than $6 for two. And they came attached to these small PC boards. Uh, I guess they just cut them off whatever board they were on. It was harder to get those uh, little bits of PC board off than it looks. In any case, uh, these are temperature controlled reference grade oscillators. Inside the can is not only an oscillator, but also a, a heating element and a PID temperature controller that work to keep the oscillator at a constant temperature. Uh, here's the spec sheet for it. And you can see that the way it's listed here, it 0.4 parts per million over 10 years, which means that basically four Hertz plus or minus in 10 years, that's pretty good. Um, and not only that, but uh, if you look up here, the, this VREF pin here is it's a, an input that is a voltage controlled adjustment. And uh, you can just implement that with a simple pot as a voltage divider. So the pot goes between VCC and ground with the wiper going over to pin three here. And then you can adjust it to get it right on the, the 10 megahertz. And it's pretty amazing. Um, one drawback is, is they're, they're pretty chunky. They're much, much bigger than a regular can oscillator. And another drawback, and maybe a little more important one, uh, is they're a bit power hungry. According to these specifications, as you can see, that the startup current is about 600 milliamps. And um, I don't know how long that takes, but we'll test that. And then it drops down to somewhere around you know, 250 milliamps or less for the running current. So that's considerably more current draw than a regular oscillator would be. And uh, a final drawback uh, is they're only available, as far as I can find, in, in 10 megahertz. I suppose if you wanted to spend a lot of money, you could get any frequency you wanted, basically. But, you know, at less than $3 each, they're cheaper than regular canned oscillators. These are the cheapest ones I could find on eBay, $4.90 each uh, U.S., as opposed to $5.44 for two. Anyway, they've arrived in the mail. So let's go down to the lab and have a look at them. Here they are. There are two of them here. And um, here's one of the bits of, uh, of the PCB that they, they came soldered to. And you can see that the, the holes are tiny and they've got these stitched ground planes. And there's a VCC plane in there somewhere. There's, it's like, I don't know looks to me like a one, two, three, four, five, at least a six layer board and it's quite thick. Uh, there are, yeah, there are a bit of problems to get them unsoldered, but I got them unsoldered. And uh, on this one here, I've, I've just soldered on a bit of uh, RG58 coax cable. It's not great cable, the impedance is all screwed up on it, it's very lossy, but it has a DNC connector on it, it was easy enough for me just to solder it on here. Um, now these things have a, a, a an output impedance of 50 ohms, so I I didn't have to put any ex additional load on it. And you see, I put this trim pot on there, bodged that on. And get the oh, just I wanted to show you this. This is there's a co size comparison between a half can oscillator and one of these. You can see that the really huge difference in size. But I think for the accuracy involved, these are pretty small actually. So let's get power hooked up to them. Get them on a scope and uh, on a counter and, and uh, we'll have a look at how they perform. It's coming in through this T to this frequency counter then down to the scope over here. And you can see I've got the power supply set up at 5 volts and maximum current I'm going to allow is 700 milliamps uh, just in case this thing is um, not quite in working order. I don't want to release too much of the magic smoke. Now this counter here was checked against a GPS disciplined oscillator or GPSDO for short, uh, just a few months ago. So it should be pretty much bang on. We're going to ignore the frequency on the scope. It, it has a readout up here, but uh, I know it's off by about three parts per million. So it's well in spec for that scope, but it, it's not in spec for this oscillator. 
So I turn on the power. I'm going to start this stopwatch so we can see how long it takes um, for this thing to warm up and get to its operating temperature. We can look at the frequency as it's doing that and the scope is just going to show the waveform. So reach around the camera. It looks like we're, we're starting off around about uh, 400 milliamps and it's increasing. The gate time on the uh, counter is 10 seconds, so it'll only update every 10 seconds or so. You see we're about uh, 230 hertz low at this point in time, and it's increasing rapidly as, uh, as it warms up. So no smoke yet, that's good. Um, we're well within specifications for current draw so far. Frequency is steadily increasing. It's nice to see because it's a little bit far out right now. Okay, so see that the current is going down rapidly. It's 150 seconds for the warm up cycle. And look at that. 9,999,999 cycles per second. That's that's pretty close. And get a screwdriver here, see if we can tweak that, get it right on. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna give it a couple of turns to the right. Unfortunately, we're missing a, a digit here. You know, when this little light here goes on, it means we should be displaying a one or more here. Um, so that is basically, uh, 10 million and two hertz. So we've gone a little bit too far. Let's, get, let's go back. It looks like we were maybe around about uh, half a turn per hertz or something like that. So I'm gonna, I'll turn it back uh, a full turn and see what that gets us. Wait for the counter to update. That's good enough for demonstration purposes. So there we are. We're right at 10 megahertz. We're basically bang on. That's not bad. That waveform is a little bit ugly. Um, I'm sure it's better than that. So I, it probably got to do with this T junction here and going off into the, the counter. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it off here and put it directly into the scope so we can have a look. So yeah, we can see this is a heck of a lot better going directly into the scope. This front edge, I, I'm sure that's got to do with this crappy piece of uh, coax here. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with these. I have a project in mind for one of these. My two counters and my two signal generators can either take or be modified to take an external 10 megahertz frequency standard. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to make this into a 10 megahertz frequency standard. That way I'll have all these instruments dancing to the same drum. Tune it occasionally to my buddy's GPSDO and uh, I should be good. I just bought four more of these. I mean, what the heck, right? There's only 296 shopping days left for Christmas. So maybe I'll give some of them away as gifts or whatever. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.